Cartoons are often associated with good memories in childhood. As kids, we would sift through our favorite channels and sit back to watch our favorite characters. The stories are usually kid-friendly, but sometimes they would border into the dark side. In these cases, the tunes are just bleak and too dark for kids. Other times, they are real-life moments. Either way, at times, we question if they were a bit too much for kiddos. You be the judge while you check out our list. But before you do, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all things Scream Rant. I want you to see your adopted homeworld bowed down before me. Only then will I allow you death's sweet release. Justice League Unlimited The 90s and early 2000s were filled with some of the best iterations of comic book storylines. They were an integral part of our childhood. And although it was awesome seeing our favorite heroes be super, it wasn't always happy. If you've read any comic books or seen any of the cartoons, you'll know that our heroes sometimes go through some pretty heart-wrenching challenges and tests. Sometimes it's a struggle to be a hero. In the show Justice League Unlimited, we followed the stories of some of DC Comics' most famous heroes. In one episode called For the Man Who Has Everything, we followed Batman and Wonder Woman who visit Superman for his birthday. What was supposed to be a thoughtful visit turns out to be a lot more complicated. They find an alien parasite attached to the Man of Steel, which in and of itself is concerning. But this alien parasite has trapped Superman in a fantasy world of his own creation. In this world, Krypton is still whole, and Superman has a kid and wife. His parents are still alive and he's happy, but he eventually realizes that it's all a dream and has to say goodbye to his own flesh and blood. Fire, get out! <laughs> to heck and back, Rocco's Modern Life. Nickelodeon's show, Rocco's Modern Life, was one of the many shows that was known for pushing boundaries. Remember Rocco's questionable phone sex operator job he had briefly? Or that favorite restaurant, Chokey Chicken? Or what about when Mrs. Bighead tried to seduce Rocco? Yeah, those were just some of the moments that pushed it a bit far. But there was one episode, To Heck and Back, in which Rocco's best friend Heifer went to hell. After choking on a chicken bone, Heifer dies and his soul floats off to heaven. Well, um, we mean heck. Except for they get replaced by anvils and he falls down to heck. As if this wasn't terrifying enough, when he arrives he meets a demon named Peaches, who has udders on his head. Peaches informs Heifer that he has committed the deadly sin of gluttony, and proceeds to show him how it's affected those around him. Heifer, of course, is mortified. His journey is filled with self-loathing, and he mentions that he's glad he's dead. Wow, talk about dark. How is this a kid's show? In the end, Rocco brings him back to life, with a light switch on his heart. Grandma's Krabby Patty. Oh, sorry. The Frozen Krabby Patty, now available where they keep things cold. Nasty Patty, SpongeBob SquarePants. SpongeBob SquarePants is universally known for being funny, goofy, and silly. Kids everywhere love the happy-go-lucky sponge. He has an entire song breaking down the word fun and explaining what fun is. The adorable yellow character blows bubbles, catches jellyfish, works at a burger joint, and hangs out with his best buddy Patrick. What could possibly go wrong? Well, not to be a total Squidward, but there was one episode that was actually pretty messed up. If you remember the episode Nasty Patty, you'll recall it ends up being pretty gruesome and horrific. The Krusty Krab is supposed to get a visit from a health inspector. The Krabs ends up thinking the fish who comes in is a scam artist, so they feed him a nasty patty and end up killing him accidentally. The death ends ends up being a misunderstanding and he lives, but Spongebob and Krabs go through great lengths to try and cover their tracks. They bury his body on Shallow Grave Road, and like any good horror film, they end up insanely paranoid and eventually try and turn each other in. This is one dark road they can't turn back from, and many fans won't forget. Oh my god, no! The New Adventures of Batman One of the most iconic is the greatest detective ever written, the caped crusader himself, DC Comics' very own Batman. If you are a Batman fan, and well, even if you're not, you probably know that the Dark Knight's storyline tends to run a bit dark at times. Just take a look at his encounters with some of his iconic villains. We're looking at you, the killing joke. However, one series, The New Batman Adventures, took us to a whole new level of somber that had us questioning if this really was a show intended for kids. The episode called Over the Edge really did take us 
over the edge. The Batcave is raided by Gotham City PD, and the entire squad knows that Bruce Wayne is Batman. Turns out, Commissioner Gordon has a personal vendetta against bats. In a flashback, we learn that Batgirl fell off a building as she was fighting Scarecrow. Commissioner Gordon finds out that Barbara Gordon is Batgirl as she lays dying in his arms. Gordon blames Batman for her death, and so hunts him down. This is one of the most intense and sad stories of the series. However, we find out that the whole thing was Barbara's nightmare, and one of ours as well. So, where are my airbenders? I'd be happy to tell you, once you hand the Avatar over to me. Long live the Queen, Legend of Korra. Whether or not you're a music buff, chances are you've heard a band called Black Flag. If you know anything about them, you know frontman Henry Rollins is a legendary badass. So if he's lending his voice to a character, you can bet your bottom dollar that the character will be pretty epic. It seems, however, that the possibilities of how villainous Henry Rollins could be made were pushed to the extreme in The Legend of Korra. Rollins played the villain Zaheer in Season 3 of Korra. And when it comes to Zaheer, well, let's just say he does very well in living up to the anarchist persona of his voice actor. In the episode Long Live the Queen, Zaheer the escaped criminal and Ever the anarchist is tired of the monarchy in the Earth Kingdom. So he takes matters into his own hands and goes to Ba Sing Se with the intention of eliminating the Queen. If he doesn't sound scary enough, let's add that he just acquired airbending as part of a new awakening of air nomads. We assume most air nomads are peaceful, but Zaheer uses his abilities for bad. He ends up taking the Queen's life in one of the most twisted ways possible. He literally bends the air out of her lungs. What are you planning? Seismic generators, Robin. And in three short hours, they'll trigger an earthquake so magnificent it will break your city in two. Haunted Teen Titans Before the adorable and funny Teen Titans Go, Cartoon Network had another show called Teen Titans. The animation was less cutesy and the themes of the show were a lot more mature. Don't get us wrong, the Teen Titans still had a ton of fun and there were some goofy moments. We're looking at you, Beast Boy and Cyborg. But it wasn't all booyahs and laughs. Sometimes things got a bit serious. Just like when Raven had to fight her dark side and her father. But one of the darkest episodes had to be Haunted. If you watched the show, you know that defeating recurring villain Slade was a personal goal for Robin. So when Slade was taken down, Robin begins to see him everywhere. In the episode Haunted, Robin remains on the alert, and while inspecting an old mask of Slade, some of the dust gets into his lungs. Robin then starts seeing Slade everywhere and chases after him. But it turns out that Robin has been hallucinating and begins losing his cool. The mask released a hallucinogen into Robin's system. The episode explores themes of PTSD and obsession. This is pretty heavy for a teen to be taking on. Don't you think? Squiddly Spooch, did you hear that, Gaz? That's no human organ. Humans don't have squiddly spooches. I've got a squiddly spooch. Dark Harvest, Invader Zim. When Nickelodeon wanted a bit more edge, they hired Jonan Vasquez. And boy, oh boy, did they get it. He created a show called Invader Zim, about an alien sent to Earth. The show had a darker vibe than anything else on the network, and although there were some questionable moments, none were as creepy as the episode Dark harvest. Zim has to take a trip to the nurse's office, and his nemesis, a kid named Dib, points out that he will never be able to fool her because he doesn't have any human organs. Zim takes this to heart, or rather lack thereof, and on his way to the nurse's office, he takes a kid's liver and replaces it with his hall pass. He goes around the school and begins harvesting organs from all of his classmates and replacing them with common items. Talk about terrifying and gross. Zim ends up being a gigantic blob full of a bunch of organs. At one point, he even burps up a part of a long intestine and slurps it back up. Arnold loves Helga. Hey Arnold! One of Nickelodeon Animation Studios' most beloved shows is Hey Arnold. It gave us complex stories, real-world issues, compelling characters, and complex plots. This show felt real, even though the characters were designed in a very stylized way. The main character gets called Football Head for crying out loud. But still, we loved how each character had their own life going on. And one person who had it rough was Helga Pataki, the girl who was in love with Arnold but also was his biggest bully. If you go back and watch as an adult, there's probably a lot more that you'll understand. One of the episodes that gave us insight into Helga's life was Helga on the Couch. Helga was a tough, no-nonsense girl, but we all know she had a soft, hopeless, romantic side. The tough exterior was explored when she sits on a psychologist's chair and we find out what led her to become a bully. This poor kid has been neglected by both her parents. Her dad even calls her by her older sister's name, Olga. Her mom is an alcoholic, that's why she was always incoherent or passed out. You get to see several events that 
that led her to create this hardened bully facade. And we just wish someone had called Child Protective Services. I found your Halloween mask lying on the ground, Tommy. I picked it up and put it on. And then I tackled her. Mother's Day, Rugrats. One of the most memorable parts of our childhood was watching Nickelodeon's Rugrats. Who didn't love the cartoon following the adventures of Tommy, Angelica, Chucky, Phil, and Lil? We loved how their imagination took them all over the world. These characters and their parents also have developed backstories which made us love them even more. From holidays, birthdays, and playtime, we felt like we knew them. But there was one episode that totally tugged at our heartstrings, and we can bet the episode Mother's Day totally made you cry as well. As you may know, all of the kids had two parents, except for Chucky Finster. We only ever saw his loving dad, Chaz. And in this episode, we see everyone spending time with their moms on this day, and Chucky was left out. If this sole fact wasn't enough to make you cry, Chaz finally talks to Chucky about his mom. We learned that his mother died from a terminal illness, and the last thing she wrote was a poem to Chucky. Chucky learns that his mom is still with him in spirit, and alive in all the beautiful things in the world. Don't forget, you need to clean your room, wash the dishes, take out the trash, finish your homework, fix the roof, eat your dinner, clean your plate, sweep the floors, brush your teeth, comb your hair, make your bed, finish your homework, fix the roof, your dinner. Twisted Sister, the Powerpuff Girls. Sugar, spice, and everything nice. These were the ingredients chosen to create the perfect little girls. But if you're familiar with the awesome Cartoon Network show, The Powerpuff Girls, you'll know that Professor Utonium accidentally added Chemical X and created superheroes. The original Powerpuff Girls series is laced with hidden adult humor and sometimes dark humor. But none was so dark as the episode called Twisted Sister. At the start of the episode, the girls come home exhausted from fighting crime all day, only to be told they still have to do their chores. Come on! Professor. The girls, however, decide to try and create a fourth sister to help them out, but they don't end up having the exact ingredients, so they make do with what they can find. They end up creating a large hunchback sister named Bunny. She isn't the brightest, and so she misunderstands and lets the criminals out and puts the cops in jail. The girls scold her and she runs off. When the girls are outnumbered by bad guys, Bunny comes in and saves the day, but ends up exploding out of nowhere. The girls are left shamed and saddened by their mean actions. This is definitely the most depressing episode of the series. What'd you get him? I'm not saying anything. He'll hear and spoil the surprise. And there you have it, folks. Those were some dark episodes in kids' cartoons. Have you seen any of these episodes? And if so, what did you think? Are there any episodes that you've seen that didn't make our list? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to Screen Rant for more awesome videos just like this one. As always, thanks for watching.